you have a winter that included, let's say, freezing rain, extremely low temperatures, ice, snow, sleet, it is going to take its toll on our evergreens. And we're going to discuss both needled evergreens and broadleaf evergreens today. And I'm visiting with Todd at Creekside Nursery in Nashville. And um, Todd, there are concerns. Every homeowner and gardener must have them. Let's talk first about what went on with our boxwoods. Is this permanent? What can we expect and when can we see it? Well, it it's probably is not permanent. A lot of damage, if, if you see, it has to do with the time of year it was trimmed. Let's say somebody trimmed them last year in September. Well, when you trim, you force new growth out and the new growth did not have time to harden off. Uh -huh. And so that cold weather just turned them brown or yellow or, or, yeah. or whatever color. And more than likely that will go ahead and shed off when the new growth comes on. Mm -hmm. And you know, every spring the boxwoods put out the new growth and you're probably looking um, you know, mid spring before you know something. If it's just if it's just a little damage like that, it should fall off. Now there may be some wind damage too on some of the other kind, not just American boxwoods. I've seen kind of an orange tint to them. Yeah. That the wind can do that. That's um, the bronzing. The That's correct, yes it can. Oh. Um, so it usually will go away. I would always make sure to do a really good feeding on them when you start seeing new growth. Um, Is it, it, what time of the year would you do that feeding? Prob probably mid-April. You know, every year is going to differ a little bit because sometimes old man winter hangs on longer than other years. Yes, so mid-April is probably a good time to, to get out and get, get going with the boxwoods. Well, tell me this. How long does it take for that fertilizer to take effect? Um, it, it's going to take a couple of weeks, I, I would think. Whether yeah. it's liquid or... Liquid's going to work quicker, but you know, liquid is something that... I, I, I like using liquid, but not all the time, because it's something you have to keep remembering to keep doing. Okay. Because it, it doesn't last as long as the granular stuff does. Like there are fertilizers that are slow release for up to four months. Yeah. So you put it on the spring and you don't have to worry about it. Yet. Okay, then so let's say that our boxwoods are most likely safe. Mm -hmm. The bronze is just going to disappear like a the clouds one Once day. your new growth comes out, it should, yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, well then let's move on to some other specimens. Let's talk about the laurels, mm -hmm. like the autoleucans, mm -hmm. the skip laurels. Mm -hmm. um, what has happened to them? Well, what will happen? What will happen? They, you can see on this one over here that there's a lot of browning and kind of like parchment looking leaves on the tips especially. That's mm -hmm. a lot of da winter damage. Wind burn can do it. But if you look along the stem coming out those little leaves, that's where your buds are for the new leaves coming on. So anything above that, if there's not a, uh, um, a bud on there, it's more than likely that part's dead. But if you'll cut it just above or just above these last little um, um, leaf buds, it should leaf out from there. So you don't have to pull all the leaves off. Mother Nature will knock those off for you when the new growth comes out. What if you, um, say, have a new home mm -hmm. and perhaps you planted last fall? What mm -hmm. what can you expect? <laughs> that one is a, not a very good one. That one's going to die. If it's if it's like that and there's no buds on it anywhere, everything's brown and, you can, and it's real crispy, that guy is probably, I'm afraid that one is gone. Uh, they just didn't have time to acclimate themselves to the temperatures here. So what can you expect to happen with the magnolia when a, a harsh winter comes and, and, and affects it? You'll, you'll get a lot of leaf burn on it, uh, unfortunately, and you may even have uh, dying out to the tips, um, which is not surprising. It, it should not kill it. It just may not look as good as you want it to for a while. I tell you, uh, Little Jim Magnolia is really a zone seven. So oh. that's like a zero to 10 degrees. So there, that guy there might have some problems. How much damage can be done to Leland Cypress with hard w winters? Unfortunately, a lot. That, that guy is a zone seven plant also. Um, you see a lot of big ones, you know, lower Alabama, um, Florida Panhandle, but the further you get north, if you notice, they don't get that big because uh -huh. they really don't like the harsh winters here. Yeah. Um, so. Keep an eye on those. They, those guys could get hurt pretty bad, and unfortunately. If they, yeah, if they don't uproot some year when we have snow. Right, yeah, they are susceptible to that. I had a neighbor who had one during the, the big flood when it rained so much, it just fell completely over. Okay, well now, let's talk about the hollies. Mm -hmm. um, when you experience leaf barn, whether mm -hmm. it's from uh, ice that's on a leaf and mm -hmm. the sun comes out, mm -hmm. that burns, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. So those leaves and those things will shed. And so mm -hmm. again, we look for that little bud. That's correct. That's uh -huh. going to force off. Yes. 
just like a pin oak. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it'll force it off and feed it when you start seeing that new growth coming out and because they're going to need some more energy and uh, um, then the leaves will shed. You just rake them up or blow them and then you're, you're off and running again, but it should not kill them, especially if they've been in the ground and established. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. I think I see an Akuba that's had a little problem, don't I? Yeah, it got a little, little cold over the winter, I believe. Yes. So is this uh, something that's wiped out or how no, would we? No, it, it, it's not. You, you can kind of look down there and see the leaves the here are, are a little more vigorous and there should be some buds coming out. If you'll look around here at the at the base, they, they're kind of late oh. to come out, but yeah, oh, I you see. can see some yeah. there and there. And the leaves down here just look a lot more um, vigorous than this growth up here. Yeah, and, this, and it's really not unusual for Akubas to do that. And um, this is a zone six that's to correct. 10. That's so. right, and it should not have any problem. It, it will just look like that um, until the just new growth it, comes out. And if you have something like this, just give it a haircut. Give it a little now, haircut, sure. Now, this I recognize as an azalea, yes. which mm -hmm. is an evergreen, right? and it falls in the broad leaf. Yes, that's right. That's okay, right. now. What do you expect to do with something like this? This one, you can kind of tell on the ends here that there are some viable flower buds there and it, it, it should bloom. It may not bloom as pretty as most years. It may be sporadic, but I would let it bloom because they put their new growth on after the bloom. And then as the new growth comes on, if you see something that's obviously dead, go ahead and prune that right. out. Yeah, go ahead and prune it out because if it's dead, it's not coming back. It's going to give you color regardless. It, exactly. And it'll fill in, um, you know, after the new growth comes out. And that's when you feed them too, is after they bloom. You use uh, um, holly tone on your azaleas okay. after they bloom. So, um, and I'll also notice the domestic nandinas. Yeah. which happens to be one of my favorite. Mm -hmm. And after a certain amount of cold weather, something does happen to them. What are we gonna have to do with this baby? More than likely, those guys have died back to the ground. They're not completely dead. You can cut them back as far as you would like, and they will come back from the ground, but yeah, they're, they're, unfortunately, they are um, going to be one of the one of the few ones that, that have really gotten hurt the worst. Okay. But they're not dead. So in the broad overview of what we've looked at, it's possible that when experiencing bad weather and low temperatures in the winter time, it depends upon the gardener as to whether or not they want to make the decision. If something is going to produce a quality plant for them, it may take another year. Mm -hmm. But if you want to dig it up and replace it, that's the per that's the homeowner's uh, decision. Yeah, sure, sure. And you know, if you wanted and you had a, the, the space kind of like we have here with our sick bay, you could take it and plant it in a spot in your yard where you know nobody sees it and, and, and see if it comes out, you know, replace it with something new. That, that's always an option. Well, and you know what? You're very optimistic. <laughs> and I appreciate that you, you can tell us uh, whenever we do have things that interrupt our gardens. Mm -hmm. It not, may not be severe winters, it right. could be a tree falling. Sure, But sure. thank you because the garden is never static. Yep, that's very true. Thank I, you. I appreciate you sharing your knowledge and time with us today. Sure thing. Anytime. Anytime.